Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Up Close on METV. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television. Today's focus is on a gem in our community, Uni University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. Joining us to discuss the many aspects of this wonderful university is Reason Regional Chancellor Dr. Arthur Guilford. Dr. Guilford, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for taking some time out of what I know is a very busy schedule to talk about USF Sarasota Manatee. I'm delighted to be here, Charles. Thank you. Before we begin, I'd like the audience to know a little bit about you. Dr. Guilford was appointed as Regional Chancellor of the USF Sarasota Manatee Campus in April of 2007. Previously, he served as the Interim Vice President and CEO since Dr. Stryker's retirement in December 2006. Now, prior to coming to USF Sarasota Manatee, Dr. Guilford worked at the USF Tampa campus for over 31 years, moving from assistant to associate to full professor, and his most recent position as Associate Dean of Faculty and Program Development for the College of Arts and Sciences. Now in that role he has had extensive experience related to faculty, governance, promotion and tenure, and program development. Dr. Guilford is a respected scholar in communication sciences and disorders. He has a strong track record in grant writing and research and a faculty member since 1976. He has served on numerous college and university-wide committees, and he has served as the Associate Dean for the College of Arts and Sciences since 2004, and was Chair of the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders for 14 years prior to the Associate Dean appointment. Dr. Guilford is a native Floridian and received his bachelor's degree from FSU, Florida State University. His master's degree is from Tulane University and his doctorate at the University of Michigan. He also taught at the University of Michigan and directed the residential aphasia stroke program there. He also taught at California State University in Los Angeles before coming to USF. He's very active on community boards and is currently president of the board of directors for the, what, what is the organization? Glasser Schoenbaum. The Glasser Schoenbaum Center, which is a wonderful organization. And you're also on the board of directors for both the Sarasota and Manatee Chamber of Commerce and SunTrust Bank. And SunTrust Bank, yes. Well, Dr. Guilford, your credentials and your involvement is, is, is very impressive. And we're very glad to have you with us today. And before we begin to talking about some of the details and some of the many aspects of what USF offers, can you give us kind of the overview of what USF Sarasota Manatee is, a little bit of its past history and where it is today? Oh, absolutely, Charles. I'd be delighted to do that. Many people don't realize that the University of South Florida Sarasota Manatee has been down in this region for about 35 years. We started with some very limited course offerings, primarily in the College of Education, because at that time there were so many critical teacher shortages, mm -hmm. we were asked to come down and to provide more instruction to help this area. And so we did, and we hadn't been down here very long when we were asked to take over New College of Florida. Most people don't realize that that was a legislative request. We didn't go in as the big bullies and take yeah, over right. New College. New College at that time, and New College is an absolutely wonderful honors liberal arts college that is now in excellent physical condition, mm -hmm. but it wasn't at the time, 30 mm -hmm. years ago or more. And so we actually, New College actually became New College at the University of South Florida, Sarasota at that point. We didn't have the manatee added. And that worked for many, many years. And then it was back in about 2000 mm -hmm. that the legislature again decided that New College could stand on its own. And so it separated, but that we should also remain here mm -hmm. and should be an active, comprehensive university. Mm -hmm. And so we were given some money mm -hmm. to relocate. And as you probably, you well know because you do so much filming on our campus, we're just a little bit north of New yeah. College and directly across the street from the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. 
And I must interrupt you just for a brief moment. If there's people in the community who haven't visited the USF Sarasota Manatee campus, you must because architecturally it's a beautiful building set in a really pristine environment. So I would encourage anyone to take a look at USF. So you've been there now in your new facilities for approximately? We moved in in 2006. Mm -hmm. And um, then Dr. Stryker, as you mentioned, left in December of 2006. Mm -hmm. And so I then took it over in 2006. And, seven. and um, it's a wonderful facility. Uh, we have about 120,000 square feet. We have the highest technology in each and every one of our classrooms. In fact, we can capture anything that's going on in any classroom, beam it to another classroom as an overflow mm -hmm. if we needed to. You've done so much filming in our auditorium, Which and you know the state of the art that the auditorium is. And then we have a beautiful courtyard. The courtyard is 100% wireless. So if a student wishes to go out in the courtyard and work on his or her laptop or go down to our lake, can also do that. We're also exploring, I'm jumping ahead a little mm -hmm. bit, but we're also exploring with Manatee County mm -hmm. to get ac direct access to the bay for our students. And so, as we talk about our crew team, I'll elaborate more on what I think will become a community-based aquatic center that operates off of our campus in conjunction with Manatee County. It's really exciting things going on. There's so many, and we want to get to all of those uh, great things, but, but before we get there, I want to talk about some of the things that are specifically happening at USF Sarasota Manatee. And one of these is your, your separate accreditation. Yes. Now, talk about why accreditation is important and why separate accreditation okay. is so important to Sarasota Manatee. Well, separate accreditation is referring to the fact that we are now a regionally accredited institution. Mm -hmm. uh, individuals should not call us a regional campus anymore because we are a regionally accredited institution. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as national accreditation for universities. Mm -hmm. There is some national accreditation for programs, but not for universities. So they're regional. So our region is the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. And so what that means by being separately accredited is we hire our own faculty. If necessary, we fire our own faculty. We promote our faculty. Mm -hmm. We tenure our own faculty. We now develop our own curriculum. Mm -hmm. So if you came to me, for example, Charles, and you said, we are desperate for a degree in television mm -hmm. here in our region. Can we work with you and can we help you develop it? If I have the resources to do it, which that's always a problem now right. in Florida, I have the perfect authority to do that. And I just use that as, as an example. As an example. It could be anything. And, and uh, we want to talk about some of those things as you're starting to develop. But that leads that campus to its own independent point of view. So you're not tied into anything which is USF Tampa, for example. Well, we're tied in in some ways, of course. We're tied into the brand. Mm -hmm. You cannot beat the University of South Florida Absolutely. brand. And just because I happen to have Sarasota Manatee tucked in doesn't mean that we're any less of an institution. Exactly. Students who attend USF Sarasota Manatee have access to everything that's offered through Tampa. In other words, if they want to take advantage of football games, mm -hmm. they're University of South Florida students. Mm -hmm. They can go to football games, basketball games. They can go to any number of things they want to. We do pay Tampa, actually, a small amount of money, but in exchange, we get $6.5 million in electronic resources, which means that one of my faculty members sitting at his or her desk can access the same electronic resources as anyone in Tampa can access. I would never be able to pay $6.5 million no. for that benefit. We, we share uh, 
uh, HR services, mm -hmm. payroll. Can you imagine how costly it would be if I had to get an independent payroll authority to print our checks, to do this direct deposit and all of that? So we share that benefit. We share the USF brand and marketing. Absolutely. Um, you know, Chris Manring does a wonderful job directing our university relations, mm. but if she needs help, if she needs access, if she needs more uh, banners, things like that, they're accessible through the system. So we function Very. as an independent institution, but we share, you know what's almost better to think of it than a USF system? would be a USF collaborative, because that's what we really do as sister institutions, and there are now three mm -hmm. separately accredited sister institutions. There's, of course, Tampa, mm -hmm. there's USF St. Petersburg, okay. and there's USF Sarasota Manatee. So as sister institutions, we really are we're separate, thought, uh, we're separate, but equal. But equal, and we collaborate with one another. We have some very exciting programs going with um, USF St. Petersburg now, because they have very well qualified special education faculty. Mm -hmm. For example, we lost our special education faculty one because she chose to move up to the Tampa campus when we became separately accredited. The other, for family reasons, needed to leave the area. Mm -hmm. So we formed a collaborative with St. Petersburg, and now we jointly offer special education classes so st students again can get a degree in special education. So it's really a win-win situation for this reason. Um, you can imagine, it makes me a touch testy <laughs> when I hear things in the community that aren't accurate. Let me clear up some of those inaccuracies if Please I can. Do. Tampa does not have the authority to take any of our money. We are a separately funded institution of a part of the state university system. So this myth that Tampa can just take money away is a myth. I'm the first to admit we have a very valuable contract that saves us as an institution millions and millions and millions of dollars, but cost me only about a million dollars to have all those contracted services. For example, Charles, think how expensive it would be if I had to hire an attorney for employee relations. Uh, HR an attorney for HR, an attorney for contracts, mm -hmm. and an attorney for litigation. Well, I love attorneys, but I don't have the money to hire four <laughs> attorneys. So through our USF Tampa contract, we get all of those services. They're a phone call away, and I have access to anything that I need. Well, I, I, I think that your uh, use of the word collaborative is, is, is the perfect choice. I mean, a strong independently, but with a collaborative nature to use the, um, the tools that are available to you. And I, I think that's a wonderful word to use. It is the USF collaborative. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the way we'll think of it, won't we? I, and, I, and I do think it's important. Uh, you as the uh, regional chancellor, uh, I, I would imagine when you see misinformation that uh, that's out there or somebody misinformed about it, it must say, well, let me just set the record straight here yes. for it. So. You know, unfortunately, though, in my position, there are times when it's very difficult to stand up in a public forum and dispute misinformation. I, I, I would imagine that's, uh, you know, yeah, the discretion there is probably that's the... That's right. My mother would be proud that after all of these years, I've learned just a little bit of coof. <laughs> Well, I, I, the, a lot, if, if I may say so. But, you know, Dr. Guilford, the, the, the thing that impresses me is about USF is the vision that's out there. Um, the impetus, you know, to make things better, uh, bolder, 
perhaps, and that's why I want to talk a little bit about the future before we get into individual right. programs that you're in. And as we look around here on the set, we see some wonderful uh, representations of the development of what your vision is for USF Sarasota Manatee. Give us a little background. Now, the one behind me, and we'll have shots of those on the screen, is uh, the way it is now. Is that it's correct? It's the way it is now. Absolutely. It's the way it is now. We actually sit currently on two parcels of land. Mm -hmm. Many people don't understand that because we do have a few distractions that fall between our two parcels of land. Our main parcel, of course, is our campus. And then we do have some properties that don't belong to us. And then we own a little small complex that used to be an old motel, right. which we refer to as the Viking complex. It houses our bookstore, a few labs, uh, and we are actually looking to form over time, perhaps in the next five years, perhaps it'll take longer, mm -hmm. depending on the economy, but a public-private partnership in which we could actually help improve the North Trail. Because you know, the North Trail could be so lovely. I mean, you're leaving beautiful downtown Sarasota, you're driving north, you're driving right along the water, although you can't see the water because mm -hmm. of the development, but you're coming along the water, you get to our campus, uh, and it's a little blighted around there because it's the back side of the airport. I love the airport, don't misunderstand me, but it is the back side of the airport and some old, relatively rundown motels. So we would like to attract some businesses to that public-private partnership, expand our bookstore. Many people don't know that many college and university bookstores are actually run by Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. Now there's Barnes & Noble Academic Division. Right. So it's not your full-fledged Barnes & Noble bookstore. But they do carry, when they have enough space, mm -hmm. more popular books and mm -hmm. nooks and you know, all of those things that people like to buy now. In a bookstore. In a bookstore. And a great deal more merchandising. We just don't, you know, bookstores make a lot of money on baseball caps and, and shirts and things like that. And we really have very little room right now mm -hmm. for that level of merchandising. So we would expand the bookstore. We would probably uh, have a coffee shop of some type that would be supported perhaps dry cleaners that would be supported by faculty, staff, students, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even a little restaurant or mm -hmm. maybe even a little full service market or gourmet market that many of our faculty What a know wonderful for. benefit, not just for campus, but for the community. Absolutely, for the community. And think of the people who live in the uplands. To have a nice, convenient, local restaurant they can walk to, mm -hmm. You know, to have a nice place you can go on a Sunday afternoon and sit outside and enjoy a cup of tea or coffee. In a you know, university complex. And in a university complex. It, it's a beautiful vision. It's, I didn't take over down here at a very easy time. No. That was the beginning of the economic turmoil the that beginning. the country is going through. Absolutely. And, the, and that was one of the issues that I did want to rough, right. roughly uh, step on is the budget. Uh, oh. The budget in, you know, in Florida and throughout the country is, is, been in, in, is showing signs of rebound. Yes, it is. And it's showing signs that you know, unemployment figures are coming down. Right. However, 07, 08, 09 were very very difficult years and you know there's not out of this recession as yet but educational institutions bore a brunt of that we did um, higher education generally in the state of Florida bears the brunt well I shouldn't just say higher education because two years ago the bottom was cut mm -hmm. out of the local school districts mm -hmm. but we have taken a loss every single year that I have been down here, 2008, 9, 10, yeah. and 11. And um, our last cut was 27% of our budget. Now, my budget is not that huge, but to take 27% of our budget was $3.3 million. If we didn't have a friend, 
and Senator Dietert. I might be closing our doors because at the last minute, Senator Dietert was able to get us non-recurring, but nevertheless non-recurring $2 million slipped into the budget, which then means that rather than a $3.3 million cut I would have faced, which would have meant programmatic cuts. And there's devastating. No it. Would have yes. been devastating. Um, we ended up with a $1.3 million cut. Um, we are hopeful that our university board of trustees and in turn um, uh, the board of governors will approve a tuition increase again. Mm. We don't want a tuition increase. I have no other source of revenue. You know, your, your viewers may find it interesting the sources of revenue that higher education have. Mm. We get some money which has been declining for years, which Periodic. is called general revenue. And that's the money that the state says is what we're going to give you mm -hmm. to educate the students. That accounts now for less than 50% of what it costs for us to educate uh, university students. Mm. So we get general revenue. And then they give us lottery money. Mm -hmm. But to think of it as cash is wrong because they give us authority. So uh -huh. in other words, if the state predicts that they're going to generate X billion in lottery dollars, our share, if the state realizes that much, I see. might be a million, mm -hmm. a million and a half. If the state doesn't get to their mark, I can't spend my mark because I won't get it. So and that's that, kind of like waiting for type of thing. You Absolutely. have you, you can't build a budget. We, on can't, we can't spend lottery dollars until we have them. So we're always spending those dollars a year behind <laughs> because I can't guarantee that I'm going to get them. And then the third level of funding is tuition. You know, it's just tuition dollars. Mm. And again, the state gives us the authority. And this is where we get in a real bind because the state might give us tuition authority of two or three million dollars. We will get that money mm -hmm. if we actually generate it. Ah, so that's I mean? the catch. Exactly. That's the catch. If we don't generate that two or three million dollars, we don't ever get it. So it, it's almost, this is a strong term, but it's almost a shell game of how money is is moved around. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we have contracts and grants. We have research overhead dollars. But because we're not as large as Tampa, our, our, our scholars, our researchers, our faculty are phenomenal people, but they don't have as long a time mm -hmm. to bring in so much research exactly. overhead dollars. When I came down here, I still had a two and a half million dollar grant. So guess what I did? I brought it down with me. Good for you. I wasn't going to leave those research overhead dollars in Tampa, exactly. so I just brought it down with me. And um, so we're working on getting them to do that, but we do have contracts and grants. And then philanthropy. You know, never in our history have institutions of higher education been more dependent upon the goodness of others and the belief in higher education. Well, it, which is a critical thing because USF generates so much goodwill and you have to reach out to your alumni, to those patrons that are, uh, that are part of the university system. And I think that's a critical thing. But again, it dates back to what the economy is. The economy is tough. It's a tough period of time. It is. And, and, but the one thing that kind of carries you through this is this vision, effort, the, the drive and the initiative to for the university and, and you, your, your individual always wants to put that university f first for the benefit of the students and, and for the benefit of the faculty and ultimately for the benefit of the community. 
And in doing that, you've set up or are, de are developing or have developed over a, period, a whole series of community partnerships, we have. which I think is very exciting because the community is part of the university and the university is part of the community. Tell uh, us about some absolutely. of those partnerships and why they're so important to you. Well, one of our most recent partnerships that many of your viewers may have read about in the paper is our affiliation agreement with Moat Marine. Wonderful. Uh, and Moat Marine has agreed actually to give us, to allow us to use a piece of an existing building. And uh, at our expense, <laughs> that's where the <laughs> rub comes, but at our expense, they will not charge us to open science labs at Moat sure. Marine. It's a win-win-win situation because we will give dual appointments to Moat scientists. They will give appointments to our scientists. We currently don't offer any of the basic sciences mm. on our campus, but in line with where we're moving strategically, we have to offer sciences. So we're very, very excited about that. I'm actively trying to get this funded, and the only source of funding I have for it is gifts mm. to the university. Um, but it's, it's going to be so good. Moat is going to now be able to apply for grants that it's not been able to apply for before. Because of the partnership with because you. Because it needed a university partnership. Mm we're going to have access to exemplary research scientists that I could never afford. And, and Moat, Moat Marine is probably the world-renowned uh, facility for their research and, and development. Absolutely it is. So that's just one partnership. That's just one. Another one that's really ideal for us is Manatee Technical Institute. Mm. I hope your viewers realize the jewel you have there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the state-of-the-art kitchens, the training, the wonderful staff. The diversity of programs also that are offered within MTI. Exactly. Uh, you know, and their workforce training positions too. For those individuals that may want to just learn that particular that graphic art skill Absolutely. or a culinary skill. And one of the key things, uh, if I may, is that the new facility that is being built for MTI will become like a feeder from all right. over the area. It's going to be a wonderful place. It's adjacent to 75, so it'll be able to bring people in and hopefully channel them to higher education as well. Absolutely. Many people may not know this, but we have a 2 plus 2 plus 2 articulation agreement. Now, before we go, let's uh, kind of clarify okay. that. I know what it means, but I want you for the audience to tell us what that 2 plus 2 plus 2 is, okay. because it's really a unique set of, of, of environments coming together. Exactly. What it is, is that students who attend MTI mm -hmm. can get their technical training and go off if they wish. That's fine. Or if they wish to come to a community or to a college now, they can then enter State yeah. College of Florida. Mm -hmm. And then once they finish State College of Florida, even if they decide, and many people don't know this, even if they go the Associates of Science route rather than the Associates of Arts mm -hmm. route, they can still often enter a four-year institution, which will be us. So that's the two plus two plus two. What a pathway mm -hmm. that allows for individuals, you know, not only to continue their education, but move them into degrees, which will put them into an employment opportunity. Absolutely. And that's, I think, is Absolutely. a key thing. Absolutely, Charles. And, you know, many people, when they're 18 or 19 years old, or their life circumstances, may say, okay, I've got to get a technical education, I've got to go to work, right. maybe I'm married too young, you know. <laughs> whatever the circumstances. Whatever the circumstances. Uh, and then in a couple of years, you know, I really want, I really want that bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. So they'll start out at State College. Mm -hmm. We enjoy a wonderful relationship with State College, and we always will. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, hmm, I really want a four-year degree. I'm going to come to USF Sarasota Manatee, and I couldn't get that four-year degree if it weren't right here. Right. 
And, and, and that's, a, that's a wonderful path. It's a pathway that you've developed and, and the partnerships continue to do. But you don't just leave it there with the university. You've also developed partnerships with the school districts. Absolutely. Area hospitals. Area hospitals with all of them. And, and, you, and even Hillsborough Community College, <laughs> South Shore. Tell so, us about Hillsborough Community well, that's College, a real, That's a real exciting adventure for us. They approached us. We mm -hmm. didn't approach them. But they asked if we would agree to come up. It's in the Apollo Beach area. Mm -hmm. So it's barely over Hillsborough Little County. Long, right. uh, and, um, and they asked us if we would come up and would consider doing some business courses because they felt that most of their students were place bound and really couldn't leave the Apollo Beach I'm area. Saying, yeah. And so we agreed, we said, we'll try it. Now, they're gonna to have to have a certain number of students in there or we can't afford to put the classes in. Understandably, on. but given the opportunity. But given the opportunity, exactly right. Um, and so we're trying it for the first time. Um, we have agreements with IMG Academy. We're offering some courses there. Some are dual enrollment courses. Mm -hmm. Some are actually students who have completed their uh, high school degree, mm -hmm. but don't want to miss out on that year of college or university. Mm -hmm. So they're beginning to take some courses with us. Um, well, and that's a great partnership in there because of the wide variety of students that come from all over the world, Ty MJ. Absolutely. And you know our new name, USF Collaborative, loves it because even though we only currently have one sport on our facility, mm -hmm. Tampa has a number of sports. St. Petersburg has one sport. Mm -hmm. And so Having our affiliation means that our sister institutions, again, can draw from those very talented athletes. And it's an exciting possibility. It's an exciting vision that you, you continue to develop, right. Dr. Guilford. But I, I want to take a few moments now to talk about your undergraduate, right. the four-year undergraduate. And, and it's very important, it's very necessary for this community to know that the university of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, um, is going to be a four-year uh, yes, university. Is. Yes, it is. What we are your are freshman students? What are they going to look like? Who are they coming from? Tell us about that. Okay. That's an exciting, exciting Our, uh, possibility. Um, let me give you first the timeline in which this progression is happening, and also to assure you that forevermore probably the majority of our students will still come in as transfers mm -hmm. because that's the case in Tampa mm -hmm. even after 60 some odd years. It's Florida. It's Florida. <laughs> it's Florida. It's a good thing. People are coming. People are coming. But we are starting to admit our first sophomores. That means students who've achieved about 40, 45 credits or more this coming fall. Mm -hmm. Many people may not currently know that we're upper division now, which means junior, senior, and graduate only. Mm -hmm. So this coming fall, we'll start admitting sophomores. Wonderful. And the following fall of 2013, we will admit our first, first time in college students. How exciting. So it's very, very exciting. We're targeting 100 students. We're actually targeting those gifted and talented students who would have otherwise left the area mm -hmm. because they didn't want a college. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to go to a college. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go to a university and there wasn't a comprehensive university here. With so, the programs, the resources, the, the talent mm -hmm. to offer them what they would like. Exactly. And also one of the populations that we're targeting, which again is jumping ahead just a little bit, but within the USF Collaborative, we're the only one that's developed a crew team. And that's an exciting thing. Let's uh, take a moment there to talk about that. Right. Because you know the rowing ha in this area has taken off. There's a wonderful facility, training facility that was built up by Fort Hamer. Right. The uh, Benerson uh, Aquatic Center right. is being built with eyes on the uh, uh, World Cup and possibly the Olympic rowing. Rowing in this area has taken off. 
Now the University of South Florida is going a step further, so tell us what you're doing. Well, we have developed our first rowing club. You can never develop a team mm -hmm. without first starting with a club. Right. But it's been very active. We had 20 active members of it this year. They've competed in two regattas. We actually won silver in <laughs> one of the two regattas. Congratulations. It wasn't an eight-man crew, mm -hmm. but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and we won bronze in another regatta. You right, have to realize, I only currently have students now for two years. Right. So for us to accomplish this in, in pretty impressive. is pretty impressive. And we will be competing, if I can get in a plug, in mid-April uh, at Benderson mm -hmm. Park. Um, and um, we will have at least a, a, a two-person team and a four-person team. It's a little iffy if we'll have an eight-person team competing now or not. I, I, think, I think it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. And, and for right. those people who have never seen a rowing race, it's very, very athletic. It's a wonderful event. And, you know, we would encourage them. And what's the date of that? On I believe it's the 14th. We'll find out. We'll put that information right. up on the screen. Good. Please do, because I might be off by a day, but I think we'll it's like out. 14, 15, and 16 is when it's occurring. And it's right here off University mm -hmm. Parkway. And um, I also would be remiss if I didn't publicly acknowledge uh, the Sarasota Bradenton Airport and Benderson. Mm -hmm. because they were the first individuals to step up and give us money to help fund the crew. Well, Benderson has always been out there. There had been another organization that really likes to see the community, you know, be, participate in some of the things. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I want to take a few minutes to talk before we get into the, the colleges mm -hmm. within the university because there's some very exciting things happen. I want you to take a, an opportunity to talk about your faculty. Oh. You, you have, we've had the opportunity to meet some of them, yes, to you tape have. some of them, and, and, and they're just uh, it's phenomenal people with, with uh, years of experience. Tell us about the, the caliber of people that are uh, part of your faculty. Well, let me give you an example that's almost a quote from our dean, Dean Anderson, of the College of Business. He did a summary of all of the publications, and the publications to count must be in peer-reviewed journals. Mm -hmm. That means a panel of your peers judge your work to be adequate to a peer. Mm -hmm. The number of books they've written, the number of peer publications, the number of grant and contracts that they've received, um, the number of presentations, national, international, and state that they've done. And he submitted this to me. And I said, Dean Anderson, and by the way, he was the former dean of the College of Business in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And the College of Business in Tampa is a much larger faculty than I have in the College of Business. And I said, Dean Anderson, how does these achievements compare to Tampa when you were there? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, they're about three times what Tampa would produce. <laughs> that had to make your day. <laughs> oh, it made my day. Actually, I sent that up to President Genshaft and I said, see what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I should tell you that our MBA scored in the top ninth percent that's of remarkable. the United States that's remarkable. in the MBA exam. That's, 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 uh, the MBA exam is very difficult, very, very thorough, difficult. very comprehensive exam mm -hmm. uh, for people to, to score in, the, in that top percentile is, 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 is a great achievement. So we have phenomenal faculty. Our faculty publish books on a regular basis. As I've already indicated, they publish in peer-reviewed journals. And you know, there may be some of your viewers who say, oh, why do those eggheads have to worry about all of that? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, Charles, your scholarship empowers your teaching. Mm -hmm. If you're not an active scholar, mm -hmm. you will never be a powerful teacher. And that's why your teachers are so, so powerful, because they are engaged, they right. are reaching out, Absolutely. they are developing programs and grants and research and development. A Absolutely. And, you know, I can't keep my hand in as much as I used to, but I've still written several chapters since I've been down here, a book right before I came down here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no, my materials are never going to be racy novels, but they're good textbooks. <laughs> 
But I must say too, it's indicative of the caliber of people that you want your university to have. Absolutely. Uh, you want them to be scholarly. You want them to take advantage of not only what the university is bringing to them, but what they can bring to the university. Absolutely. There's one other factor that separates us from our other USF colleagues too, is that our faculty in mapping out tenure and promotion criteria said that they must be strong and outstanding mm -hmm. in either teaching or research, but they must be strong in service. Yeah. No other campus has that because our faculty, because we are in this region, felt that it was important that our faculty are working with the community, mm -hmm. are working with their peers. Uh, they have collaborations. We've sent our criminology faculty into the Sarasota Police Department when there were problems there. They, they did a wonderful job. Our faculty collaborates with Newtown, mm -hmm. with Lorna Alston and her group. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an entrepreneurial program there just mm -hmm. recently. I don't think you filmed that no, one. I don't think we, that was a, that was a, a program, if, if I may, but a knowledge about where they outreach to the community, where they brought entrepreneurial skills and they brought it into an, an environment, into a neighborhood that really needed some development. And, and I heard, I understand, it, it was a tremendous success. It absolutely, it was a tremendous success. And all of those entrepreneurial programs were designed by our students. That's very impressive. With a faculty member overseeing them, of course. <laughs> but the thing that you've done, Dr. Guilford, is that you've got some wonderful colleges within the university. We and we want to talk a little, a little bit about each one of them. The first one that we're a little familiar, because we've had the opportunity to do some programs with them, is your School of Hotel and Restaurant Management. Right. And uh, tell us a little bit about that, because now it's like it's developing even further. And it is. talk a little bit about that and, and, and why you wanted to develop that college. Well, this actually we're even going to change the name to make it a more comprehensive name and it's going to become College of Hospitality and Technology Leadership. And so we're actually taking our information technology uh, department and infusing it into this hospitality and technology leadership. Part of that is because our dean of this college is internationally recognized for information security. Guess where you have the biggest breach on your credit card? When you check in? When you check in or you go to a restaurant. More so even when you check in. And the only reason I know that is because we had the opportunity to tape the, his forum, yes. and you know, not only was he like a world-renowned expert on that, right. but he had experts from oh, the uh, world. But that's that was you know critical uh, that's thinking. That's the critical time, and so he's also has a much bigger vision which I'm so excited about, Charles, because it fits my vision of seeing this College of Hospitality and Technology is sort of an umbrella mm -hmm. with spokes of the umbrella. And that over time, not only will we have that technology aspect, but we will have a, um, a aspect of of management, of tourism management, another aspect of convention management, mm -hmm. another aspect of culinary arts, which is not to say that I'm going to try to duplicate right. Kaiser mm -hmm. or duplicate MTI, yeah. but how can you manage a restaurant and a kitchen if you've never been in one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a very good cook. In fact, I do most of the entertainment cooking for our family. I could no more manage a restaurant no, than think. anything else in the world. And, 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 but what an opportunity to go back to that collaborative again. So one of these many partners, you know, you have the, uh, the, the, the scholarly approach and the technology approach one of your partners has a facility. Or, exactly. And, and that where it reaches in and can, combines the, love, the best of everything. Right. We've had a wonderful partnership with Publix mm -hmm. in their aprons cooking school. Mm -hmm. But we've quite frankly outgrown them. And quite frankly, Publix, I'm sure, sees that every hour that we're in aprons, they can't be offering a <laughs> cooking demonstration. <laughs> so um, we've had to leave Publix. 
uh, very amicably, but we had to leave Publix and are now at MTI. And I just interviewed right before coming out here today uh, a potential new instructor for us who's currently teaching at Le Cordon Bleu. Wow. Uh, tell, tell, tell us, you know, tell our audience what the Le Cordon Bleu is. It's, this one it's is the, it's one of the premier cooking, cooking schools in the world. Wouldn't that, be, a, wouldn't that be a wonderful asset? Absolutely. And they have a branch of Le Cordon Bleu in Scottsdale, Arizona, and he currently happens to be there. I can't guarantee that he will be chosen because the faculty makes that exactly. decision. But I can tell you, if we're attracting faculty of that caliber, mm -hmm. he also just completed his MBA last week. If we're attracting faculty of that caliber, we're good. Mm -hmm. And he sees the opportunity to come here and to really build. I mean, let's, let me go into retirement and let us come and let me treat you to a meal and let's go to the Culinary Institute of Sarasota for lunch. And that's all part of a, of a great vision. And, and I think, let's say that it's being run by USF Sarasota Manatee. And, and that's another thing to put in your column, uh, Dr. Guilford, is you continue to see that vision of things that can be. I, and and it's, I it's very exciting. And it ties in with all of the things that you're doing now. Well, thank you very much, Charles. We certainly try. And then, as you know, we also have other strong colleges. I've already Absolutely. mentioned the College of Business. Mm -hmm. We offer undergraduate business degrees. We offer MBAs. Um, I've told you what the ranking of our MBA graduates Very impressive. Was. But also, you, you know, your College of Education is very, oh. very well known. And we've had the opportunity to do some programs that you're featuring your faculty with the College of Education. And people from both Sarasota, Manatee, regionally are coming there you know, to take advantage of some of the programs that you're offering. We're actually doing a very innovative approach in the College of Education, which is to infuse arts into education. You know, the unfortunate method, and I hope your viewers aren't being turned off by seeing two talking heads here, but the unfortunate thing about a Eurocentric approach to higher education is we become talking heads. Mm. We walk into a classroom, we throw ourselves around, we babble, babble, babble for an hour, hour and a half, mm. then we leave. Mm. Many children can't learn that way. They have and they learn styles. better through creativity. So we're infusing arts into education, use arts to teach teachers how to be better teachers. We did a phenomenal project, some of their acronyms I'm not in love with, but it's like <laughs> smart to art, <laughs> and it's infusing STEM, which is science, technology, technology, engineering and math, engineering and math, into the arts. And we did a wonderful program on campus. Um, and where we actually had students um, making things, drawing with chalk on the, on the sidewalks, but they were doing it with geometry. They were doing it through algebra. You know, they were doing it using math skills. So math doesn't become your enemy. It becomes something that you really like. It's a very creative approach. Uh, and we're hoping over time we'll not have so many young women in particular saying, oh, I've never I learned that. Well, in, in, in to say that, I, I know that the, the university has hosted several programs that have featured uh, science, technology, engineering, Absolutely. and math, and you've invited uh, you know uh, people from, uh, children from both counties to come and attend that, and we've had the opportunity to film it. And it's fascinating. Right. You have exciting, dynamic people talking about careers in science, and it, you can see the excitement in the young women's faces as they're watching. So you're to be applauded for kind of that, initiation, that initiative to, in these programs. Well, thank you. And thank, you're one of the you. only universities we I are. know that right. does that kind of outreach uh, to do for, for well, young we students. we feel that it's really very important. And um, it's, I think it's critical that that we do and we respond to our community's needs. Mm -hmm. And I think these types of programs in the College of Education 
will do that type of thing. And then, of course, we have the College of Arts and Sciences. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, anyone who knows anything about higher education knows that arts and sciences is the little engine that drives, <laughs> that drives <laughs> this big institution. When I was dean, associate dean for faculty in the College of Arts and Sciences at Tampa, I had 650 faculty members under me. The College of Arts and Sciences in Tampa generates more than half of all of the tuition dollars, all of the student credit hours for the entire institution. My it's goodness. just that important to the, the mission of an institution. Um, it's through the College of Arts and Sciences that we're developing our science labs with mm -hmm. Moat. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jane Rose has done just a wonderful job shepherding that in. I know you know mm -hmm. Dr. Rose. Um, we also offer a great degree. We offer many great degrees in the College of Arts and Sciences. I hate to start mentioning them because I'll surely forget one and I'll anger somebody. <laughs> but of course, your traditional ones like English, right. uh, writing, psychology, criminology, but we also offer a wonderful degree called interdisciplinary social science. And what is that? Again? And it's a particularly good degree for returning adults mm -hmm. who now have gotten to the point in their life, maybe their children are moving away, mm -hmm. and they come back to school and they don't really know, they don't have a burning passion for a traditional undergraduate degree, but they want that bachelor's degree. They want to learn. They want to learn. And what it enables to do, them to do is to take information from several cognate areas. Mm -hmm. Let's say they have a child who may have a communication disorder, mm -hmm. a speech and language disorder. Mm -hmm. So they say, I want to know more about that. So they do their interdisciplinary social science, and then they take a cognate area of speech, language, and hearing. Mm. And then let's say they're also really interested in psychology. So then they do a cognate area in psychology. Now we don't allow just any course to be taken. You know, mm -hmm. we, there's certain courses, but that's a wonderfully effective degree for either a current student or a returning student. And, and it's inclusive too. It helps that it student is. to kind of find all of those disciplines and see what are the areas of interest that they would like to ultimately pursue perhaps. Well, I can give you a, a case in point on that if we have enough time for me to do this. Absolutely. But my daughter did interdisciplinary social science at, through USF Tampa. And I encouraged her to, for one of her cognates to teach speech, language, and hearing. Mm -hmm. And she did it, and she liked it, and she finished her degree very successfully, and she went and did some uh, human resource work mm -hmm. for a big institution. Burned out on that. Came to me, said, I think I'll do some counseling. I said, unfortunately, Beth, the first jobs to be cut in the public school system are counseling positions. And I said, why don't you think of speech, language, and hearing, speech pathology? Well, years ago, she wasn't receptive to that because she said that her mother and I were far, far, far too well known and she would never compete with us. <laughs> well, that was silly. But at any rate, she's now completing her second bachelor's degree Wonderful. with us and will enter the master's degree. Wonderful. So, you know, that's an, an example of find how taking this cognate area led to other development and then led to advanced work. And that's part of what you said at the very beginning. It's opportunities. It's, opportunities. it's giving the opportunity to find what the, as, the, as the university grows and develops and prospers, those students from whatever age level, that freshman class coming exactly. in, or those people that want to re-enter back to the university, they're the opportunities are within the system to develop, grow, and prosper. Ab absolutely. We're always looking for those types of opportunities, and we're always looking to offer things. You know, a university can't say, what's popular today? Mm -hmm. We can't say, what does a student need to know today? Mm -hmm. We have to always be looking five years out, ten years out. What's going to be there? What skills? or our graduates going to need. That critical thinking skill is so very important. Which would lead me to my next question. What, what are those things that we can look for and the community can look for on the horizon for well, University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee? 
even without the economy turning around, Arthur Guilford forges on. <laughs> so I'm looking to develop a new college of wellness and longevity. And I think I can do this without a huge amount of money because we already offer some excellent degree programs that fit the wellness and longevity model. Mm -hmm. uh, aging, social work, we have the undergraduate program mm -hmm. in speech language pathology now already mm -hmm. in place. I'm looking, and this is only the beginning stages, so if some of your viewers really want to become a speech language pathologist, they can't apply yet, but I'm looking to host uh, a speech language pathology program within the next year on our campus. Wonderful. Um, because that's a critical shortage area. Mm -hmm. uh, people nationwide are clamoring. And the master's degree is the minimal entry degree mm -hmm. for speech language pathology. And I think we're making progress in that regard. It's exciting. That's we'll also exciting develop part. a clinical program. And I'll put an adult spin on our clinical because I think we're not giving our adults with Parkinson's disease, stroke patients, neurological diseases, progressive diseases, the type of communication skills that we can, af can give them throughout their lifetime. And I think in this area, that's something that's critically needed. I, I so think you're exactly, I think you, you're exactly right. This area, the, developing programs that really fit into the community at large, which is part of the university system. Absolutely. Wellness and longevity is a big interest in both Sarasota and Manatee County. Developing pro programs on, on speech pathology, wonderful opportunities. Where next? What's your next step? Where next? Well, we're developing tracks within our MBA program. We have a health track. We have a whole variety of tracks. We formed a partnership with um, our College of Health, and we hope to be doing in the future some health training down here. I've mentioned our rowing team. Mm -hmm. It's going to take off and fly. <laughs> We're going to develop our own aquatic center. Oh, uh, that's exciting. In conjunction with Manatee County. Mm -hmm. They've been wonderful to us, by the way. Just mm -hmm. wonderful partnership with us. And... Um, in the next five years, remember, when I get freshmen, I can recruit from high schools right. where they've already been crewing. Mm -hmm. They won't leave the area. Mm -hmm. I'll put them on a crew scholarship, and they'll be with us for four years. And they'll wa walk away with a great education. And they'll walk away with a great education. Dr. Gelford, we're winding down right now, and I want to give you a moment um, to just talk about what this university means to this community and to this region. Um, throughout this conversation, you know, you've emphasized you know, your community partners. The community is very lucky to have a university, like the University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. You are a great community partner to have for all of the people that, with Manatee and Sarasota, that you continue to work with and participate with. So. What would, the, would you want the community to know in that final few moments? Well, where I, do you want them to? Th what do you want them to know about the University of South Florida, Sarasota, well, Manatee? That we're great, and we're getting greater, uh, and we're continuing to grow. And despite the fact that the economy has dealt us horrible blows, we're not crying in our milk, so to speak. We're looking at what we can do more efficiently. We're looking at how we can cross disciplines and still offer these innovative degree programs. Mm -hmm. For example, paint, infusing arts and education mm -hmm. is one such program. If you're showing the graphics of our long range plan, where we are mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. our five year plan, which I think is behind me, mm -hmm. our 10 year plan, we are going to become a major economic driver of this community. We're going four year, we're developing residence halls on campus. Mm -hmm. We hope to have our first one in place by the fall That's of exciting. 2013. Can you imagine the activity in the North Trail that will take place when you have about 10,000 young students <laughs> doing business there? That's, uh, that's pretty impressive, and I think that's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing for this entire region. I think so too. 
Dr. Gilbert, thank you again for taking the time oh, out to welcome. do this. And we would welcome you back at any time to talk about some of the great things that are going on at the University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. And perhaps you could host a program with some of your faculty to talk about some of these new and exciting things that are going on. I'd love to do that for you, Charles. You just asked me, and I'm glad to do it. Thank you, Dr. Guilford. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of Up Close on METV.